Welcome back. We've gotten uh, some weapons, a gun and a gas grenade. I want to see if we can use that gas grenade to get rid of this here guard. Pretty easy, just stand above him and drop it. If you drop it somewhere else, um, well, you'll miss and you need the other one. Get two chances, we'll just drop it in the right spot, bounces on his head, and he drops. You notice the remote control the a remote control device on the guard's belt. Wow, keen eyes if you can spot that from here. Well, let's uh, head over there. Should be uh, pretty easy. I mean, we're in disguise and we've got the guard knocked out, so nothing is going to go wrong. Except that. Quick! Get the helmet, you stupid dolt! It's not as if that droid was moving that quickly. My, aren't you the clumsy one? Because of your inability to walk without falling on your face, your helmet has been collected by the trash droid. Now you've blown your cover. The Syrians are sure to shoot first and ask questions later. In which case, we'll have to uh, shoot back. You need want to do that at least once because it gives you points. But it's pretty difficult to not do that at least once. It's not actually all that hard. Because they won't hit you the first time around. So as long as you are um, decent at clicking in the right spot, you'll usually survive. There he is, the guards! But it seems the star generator is protected by a force field. I'm not entirely sure if that force field uh, zaps you. And uh, in case it does... Hey. Receptor for some kind of remote control signal. The Sputnik, it says in sort of fake Cyrillic. Um, the Sputnik doesn't look like that. Um... Okay, that was a stupid message, by the way. Hey, one shouldn't attempt to manipulate oneself in a family game. Let's see. There's a force field around the star generator. You will need to turn it off first. Well, the guard had the remote control, so... I'm betting that's for the uh, star generator. Let's see. This is a small, single-function remote control. You press the start on the remote, and the force field around the star generator begins to deplete. Yay! And we've got 187 points, so we're nearly there. Now let's uh, see if we can set this baby to self-destruct. Hey, we can actually enter numbers here instead of weird symbols. Well, the self-destruct code was five, four, five, four. Self-destruct engaged. Have a nice day. Well, something tells me that we'd better get the hell out of here because the cartridge said that everything in a 5 kilometer radius was uh, in danger when this thing goes off. So we have 5 minutes to get the hell away from here. The pulsing energy surging from the star generator tells you that it has been activated and you had better quit hanging around staring at the pretty colors. Still doesn't smell like anything.
Does the Sputnik smell like anything? No. Well, there's only one place on the ship we haven't been yet, which is the uh, guarded elevator. But now we have a gun. Um, so we can shoot the guard. Hee hee hee, now you are dead. And we are not. Let's see where this leads. Hopefully uh, to some way off this ship. Actually, have we been to the left there? Oh wait, that's where we came from, of course. Ah, I'm such an idiot sometimes. Hey, this looks like an escape pod. That would be useful. And what's that thing? It's definitely some sort of thing. Gee, that's helpful. We're in another area of the Deltor. This must be the captain's personal escape pod. Um, I think if you go back up and come back down, it might be gone, actually. You're really way too busy for this, Roger. You're wasting valuable time here. No time for funny messages. Get off the ship. The ship could blow up in a million fiery pieces while you waste time licking the only thing that can get you off it in one piece. Well, it's my time to waste. Well, let's, uh, take the escape pod and get on out. With one final, uh, ding ding ding, we now have 201 of 201 points. Isn't that nice? And there we go. And there goes the Deltor. In an earth-shattering kaboom. Too good for him, I see. Let's head on home to enjoy the spoils of our victory! Hey, look. Roger Wilco, we, the people of Xenon, extend our limitless appreciation and eternal gratitude for your acts of heroism. He looks like King Graham with that hat. And hey, look, it's the two dudes from Andromeda. Because of your bravery, the planet Xenon, and indeed the entire galaxy, has been saved from domination by the evil, and not to mention ugly, Syrians. It's my honor to present you with the coveted Golden Mop, a symbol of pride and accomplishment to members of your esteemed profession. Uh, yay, a Golden Mop, that's really what I was hoping for. Henceforth and for all time, you will be known as Hero of Xenon. Until the next game, anyway. Watch the spaceship, and by the way, the uh, airship that goes by. Well, Roger, you did it. You saved the galaxy, received your profession's most noble tribute, and got the girl. And somebody shot down the airship. Wait a minute. There wasn't any girl. Sorry. Well, you got the mob, anyway. From now on, Xenon's yours oyster. All you have to do now is sit back and let the book and movie offers roll in. And who knows, maybe you'll even have a series. And now, as the sun sets on the peaceful blue planet, Xenon, and Roger Wilco's first adventure, yes, I'm afraid there are more, we hope you will remain in your seat long enough for, to let us express our limitless appreciation. Yeah, I cheated a little bit there with the text, because those text boxes go way too quickly to read out loud. Well, that's the first Space Quest game. It's pretty short, but it sets the stage for what would be one of my favorite series of games. The remake, the remake uh, adds a lot. It has nice B-movie inspired graphics, um, lots of extra humor, and awesome music. Like most point-and-click remakes of partial based games, it is easier than the original, but that's not really a bad thing considering the original was incredibly hard to figure out at times. So, until Space Quest 2, I bid you adieu.